Hello and welcome to the 78th episode of Inner Defense. Uh, we are back after a break uh, that we had to take last week because of some personal reasons. Uh, professional reasons. Professional reasons as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you personal. Up, I, was, I was caught up. You, yeah. you really caught up with work. With so. work, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was very caught up with work. Uh, we had our uh, flagship event, the yeah. group's uh, conclave that was uh, organized in Mumbai this uh, this time. So really caught up uh, covering that. But uh, we're back this week, and what a time to be back! Before we get to it, you know, a brief announcement for our listeners and viewers. Uh, we are uh, we have a WhatsApp channel now, uh, like almost everyone has uh, these days. Uh, it was rolled out around uh, ten days ago. So if you are on the latest version of WhatsApp, do follow us on our WhatsApp channel. Your our number is eight five double eight nine double six double nine six, or you can also search for India Today podcast. You'll be able to find us. This way, you'll ensure that you'll never miss out an update from our podcast. Thanks. So Abhishek, uh, how was your weekend? I was actually out for a short trip uh, on, oh, on, okay. on a weekend. Uh, not a holiday, holiday, but uh, mm. out of town for some Achha. work. Right. So it was um, not a hectic weekend, but okay. yeah, I mean, not the relaxing weekend that right. I usually, uh, uh, you know, like. Uh, but yeah, over the weekend, I think was the India versus Australia match, mm-hmm. the first mm-hmm. match that India was playing uh, in the World Cup. So that was one of the highlights. Right. Quite excited about that. Mm. Uh, got a chance to mm. catch up with cricket after a mm. long time, where where I think I probably watched a full fifty over game yeah. after quite a while. Mm. And this is what World Cup does because there's so much uh, overdose of cricket. I think now, mm. although I I used to be a big cricket fan, I still am. Uh, but it was difficult to uh, watch a full fifty over game, but I watched that day mm. and thoroughly enjoyed it. Right. Uh, the reason I asked was not actually to make small talk. If our listeners and viewers are thinking that was actually because for me, uh, it was what have I woken up to moment on on Saturday uh, when reports started mm-hmm. coming in uh, of Hamas uh, terrorists uh, infiltrating into Israel. Yeah. Uh, the weekend, I think that happened on the same day. Uh, as, the uh, match, as the match, uh, yeah, 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 as as the match, yeah. Uh, the weekend obviously was, you know, a lot of fog of uh, war, fog mm-hmm. of conflict. Uh, not a lot of information immediately available on what exactly has uh, gone down. But now we're into day five, I think, mm-hmm. of uh, the war. After that, we're recording this on a Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday after uh, the conflict started. I really don't know where to begin with this whole uh, thing, uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict, uh, Hamas's invasion. Yeah, difficult uh, to find a starting point, starting point uh, for yeah. a conflict which is thousands and thousands of years old. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, goes back, I mean, I no, Probably since biblical times. Biblical times, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's where the genesis yeah. lies. The crux actually is of the whole uh, yeah. religious uh, uh, texts and everything. So yeah, that's that. Uh, and but whose natural home is it? Is that's, that's uh, the, yeah. Jerusalem. That's that's the crux. That's right? the crux of it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't think we want to dive deep into the into the into the whole uh, conflict. Oh, between, we'll touch upon we'll it. Touch upon we'll it, it because uh, you know I I feel uh, that such uh, wars, mm-hmm. such conflict, without uh, giving getting a sense of uh, historical context. The genesis, the crux of uh, it. Yes. It doesn't make sense. Yes. You can you can talk and try to intellectualize it as much as you want, mm. uh, and talk of uh, uh, several. Uh, Ideas, rather ideals, mm. <laughs> uh, not not touching upon history. Uh, as a student of history, I always I always say that in a in a history class, uh, whenever you study a war, mm. uh, you you get to the background and the history of that war mm. and a map. Of course, and a map. These as, two things. Yes. So once again, I wish we had. Uh, uh, something to show a map, right? Because uh, in this case, a map is very, very important. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, this is it, it. A map will tell you. It tells you what this conflict is all mm. about, and it's calling it complicated would be a would be an understatement. Uh, I'm I'm hearing the term border a lot in the newsroom. Mm. Palestine Israel border. Yeah. Well, there is no border. <laughs> there are settlements. Yes. So there is Gaza, mm. which is on the west. Western coast, dare I say Israel, mm. but whatever you want to make of that map, yeah. uh, on 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 the western side of uh, Israeli settlements, and uh, what is called the West Bank is actually the eastern side. Eastern side, yes. It's called the West Bank because it's west of the Jordan River. Yes. And then there are four countries surrounding this la- chunk of land. Two in the north, Syria and Lebanon. In the east, it's Jordan. In the south, is Egypt. Egypt. 
just trying to give a sense of uh, the dynamics mm. in the region and uh, the israeli arab wars that were fought were fought with these four countries coming together against israel yeah uh, so yeah it's a starting point for this is really difficult to pinpoint uh, but uh, we'll try to break down the current developments yeah. uh, what probably triggered all of this uh, a lot of fog of war as you said in the run up uh, a couple of years back uh, the action at the alaksa mosque mm. Mm. i think all this will make for an engaging conversation yeah. right over the next half an hour one yeah. i don't know how how long it lasts <laughs> yeah uh so <coughs> let's start with uh, the one thing that has been highlighted the most uh, by almost every commentator and uh, geopolitical expert uh is how israel was taken by surprise uh they've linked it to uh that perhaps the prime minister netanyahu's uh, uh, attention was somewhere else because mm. let's remember israel has been facing some uh, domestic protest yeah. the government over there sorry yeah. has been uh, facing some uh, pr- protest from the citizens on some judicial reforms they call it uh, that they've tried to bring in which essentially seek to take away the judiciary's power to yeah. repeal the, the, laws the justice minister is under a lot yeah, of attack yeah yeah repeal laws that have been passed by the israeli parliament uh so that's one argument uh first you tell us because you've covered conflict uh, and you've covered another conflict the recent the most recent one uh, russia ukraine also a conflict in which a lot of experts were surprised with what happened with the fact that russia could not easily mm. overrun ukrainian forces and that ukraine was able to you know and it's still able to uh, put up a very solid defense uh, what do you think has gone wrong over here because we keep hearing about these yeah. uh, sophisticated I mean, yeah, iron dome missiles and you know how israel and the reason i ask also is because israel has managed to build its image of this impenetrable fortress you know the world's best spy agency uh, agents going out and you know carrying out covert operations amazing weaponry precision strike weaponry mm-hmm. stuff and and a uh, electrified uh, high tech wall separating gaza the strip from israel the mainland uh but what went wrong then see before we get into that discussion i'll just like to uh draw upon an analogy which is very common in indian indian drawing room discussions mm. the chinese business model and how great that country is to do business and the big aspiration that one would hear uh, from a lot of indian businessmen who thought that india is there are a lot of bottlenecks in india and look at the chinese uh, well that myth has been i think busted a bit mm. as far as indians are concerned uh, i wouldn't like to call the israeli uh, firepower a myth mm. but to have this halo around yes. somebody's capabilities and always sort of talking about replicating this model mm. in our context this is i'm pure, speaking purely from an indian point of view i think is very short sighted uh, in warfare as we have seen several times uh, there is no guarantee it is no matter how strong you are and what what kind of deterrence value you have for the uh, for, for the adversary the element of surprise mm. does the trick you might get back but the initial damage that element of surprise does sometimes pushes you back seven steps mm. and you have to start from there so i have no doubt in my mind that the israelis will hit back and hit back hard and are already doing that they already doing that but the damage that's already happened questions are being asked yes. in israel who is responsible for this and uh, president uh, netanyahu is not in a very comfortable position i'm not talking about the external pressure but the domestic pressure on him and his government i just saw a former israeli prime minister raising certain serious questions saying uh, that uh, it's his arrogance that has yes. cost uh, uh, the, the israeli state and i think a former spy chief has said that we had sent alerts but we had sent alerts and i i will come to that there's a there's a lot happening there a lot of reports suggesting that of course there was intelligence but probably at the higher level that intelligence was not being taken as seriously as it ought to have been uh, because there was some kind of uh, a sense uh, that uh, hamas is manageable hmm. 
and that there is some kind of a back channel talk happening uh, to make sure that nothing really happens mm-hmm. and you know you can manage your way uh see hamas is not a government and it's not a military under a government it's an independent military so when you are engaging with an independent military when there is there is a lot of scope for 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 a for an outfit like that to surprise you and surprise. that's what they did and there is a sense uh, that this uh, lull was created to lure the israeli into believing that into believing that happen. you know that there can be a compromise mm. and that the hamas will compromise that there's corruption between within within their ranks uh they are fissures it's 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 a fractured body there was a sense in the intelligence setup that we'll probably buy them out or we'll this is this a lot of reports that have been done uh, on those lines in fact uh, ankit uh, who who does uh, are a lot of in- ocent work is working on a story as we mm. speak and i was with him discussing uh the same thing and uh we maybe maybe we should share that link of that sh- story when it's mm, complete yeah, we will. uh because uh, it was all in public domain especially those uh, motor gliders that yes. have been used those videos were there in public domain yes and that's a very rudimentary archaic guerrilla warfare kind of tactic that has been used no military and you know high tech military like israel uh, would really prepare for something like that you know, they have an iron dome to to take on missiles rockets but armed men flying, flying sitting on those gliders yeah. hovering those those are they, they they hover and fly at a very uh, low level impossible to be detected mm. by radars in fact they can be seen by the naked eye but nobody probably imagined that uh, this would be and why nobody imagined because those videos were in public domain yeah. those training camps uh, was so close to israeli uh, military installations uh, that it's impossible that israeli surveillance and drones have missed them i i am i i, I cannot believe that that was missed mm. that these guys were training for this because it was out there to be seen and see these are desert like places i mean uh, it's 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 easy to catch uh, any activity it's yeah. sparsely populated it's it, to for for this to go unnoticed uh is i i i think it's impossible i think it's more more to uh it than than just failure intelligence failure i think it's a big blunder at, at a at more strategic level, level. Yeah. yeah i agree because uh you know unlike let's say a 2611 or a 911 where you have a very small group of people involved yeah. 2611 was 10 10 uh, yeah. uh, 10 men uh 911 i i think it was around 8 or 7 i'm if i'm not wrong uh, uh, guys who flew the planes into the into the towers so detecting them is almost like finding a needle in a yeah, haystack yeah. but this was a large army preparing for an all out invasion this was an army see while while hamas is a militant organization it's a, a it's, terror outfit yeah. whatever a name you want to give it but it's a full scale army yeah they operate like one yes so uh, that's what i'm saying to for, for that to have gone unnoticed in terms of intelligence uh, seems hi- highly unlikely i i feel it's misreading of the situation hmm. somewhere that uh, you, you you completely misread the situation the inferences that you draw out from such human yes, int that yes, comes in yes. is so important yes uh, see uh, th- there can be a whole lot of intelligence there's always a flurry of intelligence and every time when something goes wrong uh, you look back and say that we knew this hmm. so, but it's not that simple it, it cannot be simplified yeah uh, the larger context here is that uh, probably probably the the israelis were thinking that uh, things are under control yeah. and also there was a, a sense that you know if there's trouble there'll be it it will be in the west bank area mm. that 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 place had been more volatile yes probably recently as yeah, well yes yeah yeah probably gaza was being seen as mm. uh, a place which had attain some sort of calm yeah because historically you've um, uh, had a almost sort of a blockade i mean apart from some basic yes, human yeah, maintenance exactly, like food exactly. and water israel surrounds most part of it egypt's there and then you have yeah, the sea o- yeah, over yeah. there so, so it was a sort of a blockade yeah. from as far as israel yeah. is concerned and f- for them to uh, launch this kind of uh, an audacious attack mm. i mean i don't know yeah. and, and uh, again international reports suggesting that a gentleman 
by, by the name of Muhammad Daif. Yes. Uh, was the mastermind. Who was who's the mastermind has um, missed assassin assassination attempts by Israel seven Several times. Several times. Seven, seven times. Seven, seven times, is yeah. the is the atta- is the number that I have read. Uh, he's not a young guy. Hmm. Uh, probably around 60 in his late 50s mm. he's 64 65 born i guess mm. so that makes him yeah, close to 60 yeah uh very less is known about him no pictures available anywhere but he apparently came out and gave a message uh, on on the hamas channel which is which went viral so that was another new you know information warfare kind of a tactic mm. being used by hamas uh getting a guy to speak who's very seldom who's come out i was reading somewhere that there's one picture of his in his 20s and uh, a masked picture of his and a shadow mm. <laughs> that's how secret he is yeah and he's supposed to be one of the mm. top commanders uh, and he he commands some of the crucial brigades is what i have read so i think yeah secrecy was was the essence mm. of uh, this kind of an operation if i can call it of course it's a terror attack because civilians were yeah. targeted uh, but other than that one one attack where you know civilians were targeted specifically i think the initial uh, mayhem mm. disruption was targeting military yes military installations yes. Yes. and then came that music festival music festival yeah which was really horrific yeah. i mean those were people uh, we we had a guest uh, uh, speaking on india today channel who who's explaining what really happened and he was present there mm. and he was saying that this music festival is all about peace love etc and uh, for that music festival to have been targeted uh, it really sends a message mm. that these people are against uh, peace so i mean that's that's their narrative of course if somebody has been caught uh, in an attack like this i think you and i are nobody to judge what their views are yeah of course and geopolitics aside yeah of course i'm um, glad you uh, raised that point because you know on this uh, on this podcast and in, in on in our defense uh, sometimes because of the subject matter at hand because the podcast is all about defense and uh, the way we go about clinically assessing and talking about stuff but we try to we, humanize we, our yeah, defense yeah, yeah. stories which is we, which we is try one to, of our but uh, yeah for our listeners and viewers sometimes it might be like you know okay, these two guys don't even care about people losing their lives of course of course we do but that's why we're uh, discussing that's why we're discussing it but we would like to look at the at exactly what sparks such a conflict exactly exactly mm-hmm. what leads to such a such a such a war uh, and a group like this carrying out massacres like mm-hmm. that and what's all behind See, it See uh, any any military defense that. story is incomplete without a human story of course after all these are human minds yes at work yes and uh, in, in uh, this is definitely a very human story because as as we talked at the beginning of the of our discussion that the genesis goes back thousands thousands of years back mm. and uh, it is uh, it is embedded in relig- religious beliefs traditions mm. so it's extremely religious for both sides no nobody can you know take the high moral ground and say uh, that uh, no our war is not about religion mm. so that's where those thin lines come in you know mm. what exactly is a religious war yeah who do you call a terrorist who you, who you don't that's why i'm saying that it's very difficult for people like us to to be judges of uh this the, these kind of conflicts where the genesis is actually mm. religion and it's openly religion nobody is saying that it's it's a piece of land or a dispute no it's it's not it's not an india china lac dispute mm. it's a very emotional thing that has gone in your dna no, no i'm not saying that uh, the lac dispute or the loc dispute is not an emotional issue for mm. uh, countrymen of course it would be but the genesis is not religion yeah right. at least from the indian point of view mm. right uh right. so going back to uh, the the attack itself and what we were discussing uh, do you think because i i do think so do you think that uh, this aura this strong man image uh, that uh, israel israel had built for itself similar to what we show, saw in russia with with putin uh also kind of lull the country into a sense of complacency which is ultimately what like and the reason i asked that is because we do see a lot of uh, talk about the israeli model and how and not just in india by the way how it should be adopted uh, elsewhere how it's like a good mm-hmm. model for defense and dealing with terrorism dealing with militancy dealing with infiltration stuff like that uh 
but do you think that that having that sort of image too much See, talk each, about each it each country each country is uh, entitled to have their way of functioning i visited israel quite recently yes yes fact, we I did went to jerusalem as well yeah. i went to jerusalem as well uh, which Cyber has been at the, uh, has been the, at the yes. epicenter of conflict uh, i managed to get a sense of what the alaksa mosque uh, controversy and dispute is of course non muslims are not allowed anywhere close mm. to the mosque so i had to stay far away and uh, talk to people uh, what what it is all about and yeah there were people did talk about that israeli operation that happened uh, i was also part of an, uh, a guided tour so of course that guided tour was uh, you know it was the israeli version of things we, we were guests mm. of israel uh, but i i don't think they said anything controversial they they were aware that these are international journalists and there there is a way of addressing issues in fact i also visited um, the old city of tel aviv jaffa mm. and be it at jaffa or uh, at uh, jerusalem there was a big thrust on on showing that see jews christians muslims live together in these traditional old places a lot like india actually you know we like to show this as well isn't mm. it in our old towns uh, you do see a mosque and uh, a kashi vishwanath yes. mandir in uh, banaras mm. virtually sharing walls and uh, yeah we we like to showcase that as our symbol of uh, secularism and peace and how two religions can uh, coexist together even though there have been several differences differences can be there there have been communal riots so many things have happened but nothing can be taken away from the fact that people have coexisted hmm. so a similar thing i saw in uh, in jerusalem and in jaffa which is the old town of tel aviv and uh, there was a thrust on that, that see there's a mosque here uh, several several years old there's a synagogue here this is the muslim neighborhood this is the jewish neighborhood and probably the only i wouldn't say controversial uh, but this this is some, something that the israelis take a lot of pride in uh, that these are muslims living in israel yes and they don't dream of an independent palestine hmm. land of their own this is their land you know that's the narrative that yes. this is their land any muslim who's living here they belong here they don't need a separate land they don't want a separate land uh, so yeah that's that that was that that was the message that that was given loud and clear uh visibly of course in such places you don't see any animosity hmm. you wouldn't see in jerusalem of course you see uh, at that point uh, close to that uh, mosque the alaksa mosque which is actually the third most important religious place of worship for muslims after makkah and medina hmm. uh there you see because the, the, the that's where the border is the western part of jerusalem and the eastern part of jerusalem so the western jerusalem is in complete control of israel and although israel again believes that the entire land of jerusalem is what should be there is completely but the eastern parts of jerusalem is where the, they see the, the, there are pockets there's there's no chunk of land which can be said which is palestinian hmm. and that's why this is much more complicated Uh, than any other conflict than any other land dispute because otherwise you have an loc you are have an lac yes. you have some demarcation here there are pockets west bank is full of pockets yeah. so you will have a palestinian uh, pocket close by there will be an, a, a jewish area and if i'm not mistaken somebody was showing me that how it's divided <coughs> into zones hmm. which are sort of given numbers Okay. Yeah, and I was shown a map as well. Mm. You know, this is what a West Bank map looks like, and uh, they they mark it with colors. That this color is Jewish. This is mm. here in this in this pocket. The majority is Jewish. In this pocket, the majority is Muslim. Muslim. So it's much more complicated uh, than one can imagine. <laughs> I mean, all all disputes are, but this one uh, really is at, at a different level. True. True that, uh, you know, uh, on the point of intel failure, intelligence gathering failure, intelligence uh, 
reading failure, like you said. Uh, it's a good point you made because I think uh, for our listeners and viewers, something we should highlight is that uh, a lot of intelligence work is actually desk work. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you have obviously your uh, you have your human agents on the yeah, ground. Yeah. You have yeah, your technical tech, assets, tech, 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 uh, tech assets, assets yeah. uh, satellites, uh, stuff like that. Ultimately, it comes into this one sort of a center mm-hmm. where somebody has to sift through everything and yeah. figure out what's going on. Yeah, decoding that is what is. And it's, I, it's a little like what a reporter does. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, actually, you, know, you get you go from out, various sources. You get lots of information. What yeah. you do with that information. Uh, a lot of times, as younger reporters, we ask, "What's the headline?" One hmm. line, what's the headline? Hmm. So you should know what is it that is most important in this. You know, all confusing. See, editors were dealing. I mean, you are at the desk. You are one of those editors. You're dealing with hundreds of yes. stories. If I were to pitch a story to you, you don't want to listen to a long story behind it. You just want in one line. And if I write that well, if I give a good headline, you'll say, "Ah, this is good here." Yeah. Hmm. I'll take it, but if it's all all over the place, you will probably give it to some sub editor. The sub editor will be scratching her head, abusing me. <laughs> what has he written? It's confusing. Yes. So it's a bit like that, you know. You need to simplify, decode it. That's what the job of a reporter hmm. is. Similarly, uh, people, as you said, sitting at uh, these high-profile Intel desks, lots of information comes. But what hmm. do you do with it? And uh, what do your seniors do with it? So sometimes a reporter's story is screwed up yeah, because of, of a senior desk hand. Yes, <laughs> happens. Similarly, you know what what does what does uh, somebody who's in authority mm. uh, sitting over there do? And I mean, these are questions that that, that will that are being asked. Are being asked in Israel. In fact, uh, a former uh, former Intel chief of mm. uh, uh, of uh, Israel, in fact, has said Shin this. Bet. He, he has said this yeah. that you know yeah. The, there is a need hmm. uh, to uh, get into what went wrong. So there is acknowledgement that a lot has gone wrong. But for the time being, we need to retaliate. Yeah. In fact, uh, it's a good point you made. It's not just him, uh, I, the guy you're talking about. I forgot his name, but he uh, he's the former head of Shin Bet, the Israeli spy yeah, agency. Yeah. Uh, a lot of former Israeli officers, uh, officials, by the way, uh, whether it's civilians or some people from the military or spy uh, uh, setup, uh, have actually uh, made it quite clear that once this is over, once Israel achieves what it wants to achieve, which mm-hmm. is the total decimation of Hamas, uh, heads will roll and they will roll at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Uh, some have even indicated that Netanyahu himself, he will not make mm-hmm. it after this. Mm-hmm. This is his last sort of... And thing. I think to redeem themselves, I don't know, I mean, they'll really need to decimate Hamas. Yeah, they will. Really, it, it, has the to be, it has to be that uh, uh, the LTT movement of Sri Lanka. Hmm. Now that completely crushed when you say completely crushed it means not a single person and, either alive or and completely there. you know break their back uh, as far as foreign funding or whatever support see all these outfits whenever their leaders get cornered they have they find safe havens outside yes. outside those countries and if you really really want to crush a movement you have to make sure that you crush these elements outside that area also because that's when that's where this, they, they turn into ideologues yeah. And start sort of uh, inspiring people to do quote unquote spectacular things. Uh, so it 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 what Sri Lanka did with LTT, hmm. I can only think of something like that. If the current uh, dispensation in Israel want to redeem themselves, yeah, and which it's is the where worst breach since 1973. Yes, yes, and which is where things are going to get extremely complicated uh, and which is what we are seeing in real time and live right now as it's happening uh, and we I, that's something I want to discuss the most on this episode but we'll do that after a quick break it is their land too how are you skew, squeezing them out of their own land and are expecting mm. um, them not to uh, retaliate or respond so a lot of people say that this is going to be Israel's retaliation to mm. Hamas attack yeah um, but if you look back and see, in all probability, it is Hamas's retaliation to what has already been done yeah. for the past one and a half years. Still does not justify it. They should have looked at better ways to take on Israel. And uh, armed struggle cannot be the only way out. But nobody was listening to the Palestinians. And the biggest mistake over here that nobody really seems to talk about is... 
who was supporting Hamas and created Hamas. West Bank and Gaza both were under the control of the Palestinian Authority, the PLO. And then what happened? You you have another organization that comes up in, in Gaza, and then in the elections over there, Hamas takes control, and Mahmoud Abbas loses control. Mm. You did not, this is Netanyahu and his government's plan to sideline uh, Mahmoud Abbas, you were okay. And today, that same monster yeah. you is staring you in the face. And there is not much mm. that you can do. Mm. Yes, you'll be retaliating. And um, a lot of questions are being asked about Iranian hand, that Hamas has Iran support for now. Iran has said that there is no support. Mm. U.S. has said there is no support. Mm. Hezbollah is saying we are not supporting yeah. right now, but it's only a matter of time. Imagine if all these extremist forces come together against Israel. It is going to be very, very difficult. The only thing is that, yes, for them also, it is a, a, a thing of survival. They're a very small population living mm. in a very small space that was given to them by the British so there are historical wrongs that have been done yeah, and yeah. writing and those wrongs are going to be yeah. almost impossible. Welcome back. Abhishek and I are discussing Hamas's attack on Israel that took place this weekend. Uh, we are recording this on the Wednesday after uh, that. Uh, and uh, what could possibly be, uh, what could have led to uh, the terrorist organization managing to surprise Israel? Uh, so that's what we discussed in the in the half before the before the break. Uh, now we want to move to Israel's response to it. Uh, don't have to second guess what it will be because Israel has made it very clear what it will be. Mm -hmm. uh, their officials, including the defense minister, have used words like uh, Gaza, the strip from where Hamas, opera Hamas operates, will be turned into a tent city. Uh, they will have no food, no water, no electricity for in the near future. It's a complete blockade. That was all. There was already a, yeah. a, 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 an economic blockade. Uh, so, and but there was some humanitarian, you know, aid going through the mm -hmm. through the uh, wall that Israel has uh, along the Gaza Strip. And this is where things get really complicated. And this is where even I cannot... I mean, do you think they can get even more complicated? I, just imagine. As I just said, that thousand years of... Uh, thousand and thousands years yeah. of conflict. Yeah. Uh, it, uh, complicated is an understatement yeah. for this... Uh, which is what... This which is, which is Yeah, which is what makes this <coughs> more compl complicated. Because... Uh, and that's what I'm saying. I don't know where even I stand on this. Same here. Same I here. I completely I, agree with you on this. Uh, when people say... And I see a lot of uh, illicit generalizations yeah. being made. Mm. Uh, what's wrong? Israelis are fighting for their what? What is their natural home? Uh, the other view here is Palestinians have been wronged. Uh, then you hear there was there was never any Palestinian mm. land. Uh, people who are in favor of Israel, and then there is a counter that these people had moved out of here thousands and thousands of years back. And then they came back. Mm. They were made to come back, which is, of course is true. I mean, uh, again, touching upon history. Uh, I, no, I don't think there's any dispute in the world where the British have not had their oh, let's part. Oh, not get it. Yes, and, yes, yeah, definitely. It? So we first world war, first world war. It was it was the British who got got the Israeli Jews this lure. Yes, that you know, you help us fight the Ottoman Empire and. We'll get you back, and yeah, they did settle them yeah. back there. And I think the, the 1917 declaration said that you know Jews sh ha should have a yeah, natural homeland. Home. This natural is their natural homeland. This is their natural homeland. Yes. So I mean, I'm not against the idea. I mean, let's nobody should get get us wrong. If people can live happily in their natural home, uh, I mean, perfectly, uh, mm. I, I have no no problem with it. So uh, yeah, I mean, they, they, these these are some of. Uh, the questions that really I don't have answers to. I I cannot make these illicit generalizations mm. and say that yes, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who's right and who's wrong in this. It's extremely difficult to make that uh, judgment. Yeah, yeah, because you know I, this is what I've been thinking over the last two three days. That does Israel have the right to completely annihilate uh, Hamas? Yes. 
Yeah. But does that mean that it should also have the right to completely blockade Gaza, where you have lots of civilians staying yeah. uh, without food, water, electricity? I don't think so. But then, but how also, do you go again, about? Again, again, I as much as I say that uh, it's we, it's difficult to sort of uh, take sides here. Uh, there, there are all counter arguments to everything, isn't of course, it? Of course, of course. In this, in this uh, debate. So one of the biggest uh, critics uh, of critiques of uh, the Israeli point of view is that uh, if you wanted to control these areas, then might as well annex them completely. Yes, isn't it? I mean, yeah. so why have these West Bank pockets and create Allow confusion? Allow them to yeah. like take over and then just have yeah. one nation take over the entire nation. But you know what? Probably. Not probably. I mean, I think that's that, that has been the reason historically. Mm. Uh, Muslims would have been in majority in mm. the Jewish land. Mm. Yes. So that's what creates more complications. Mm. It's a bit like what happened with Bangladesh. Yeah. Despite being in minority, uh, they won an election. Their leader won an election and we all know what happened after that. There was mayhem in East Pakistan which is now Bangladesh and uh, of course, strategic move by India, everybody knows. Uh, I, we don't need to get into it. So, there's a lot of confusion. So mm. if, you, if Israel wants, they can take over the entire sort of disputed areas. And uh, yeah, I mean, Jews and Muslims can live together. Mm. But Jews in their homeland will be in minority. In minority, yeah. So that's, adds to, that, that's what adds to the complications. Mm. Uh, right, uh, but and because there is no uh, clear boundary mm. that one wall will ensure mm. that uh, the Muslims stay here and the Jews stay here, mm. that's not possible. Yeah, because they are all over the place. Mm. There, there are Muslims who, who demand a Palestinian land in the western side of uh, the land now in complete Israeli occupation. And on the eastern side, yeah. so I mean, how do you divide uh, such such a piece of land? Of course, on the basis of religion. And also, you have to remember that. And see, that's exactly what happened with East Pakistan. Yeah. Because the partition happened on the basis of Muslim population, mm. and suddenly you realize that probably a thousand kilometers away, or more than that, and in between, there's a big landmass which is India. You created East Pakistan. Mm. So it's a bit like that. And this is, of course, a much smaller landmass. But that confusion is a bit like that. Yeah. And you also have to remember that uh, what also further complicates this is within Palestine, you have three different factions playing a role. You have Hamas, uh, you have the Fatah, and PLO. you have the Hezbollah. Uh, yeah, sorry, the, the, PLO. the PLO. Yeah. So it's uh, like, you know, I, like I said, just do not have any clear Yeah, see, I mean, the Palestinian this. Authority, uh, PLO, Yasser Arafat's uh, successors, I think, are the intellectual, yes, uh, you know, side of mm. the the movement, and uh, of course, Hamas is the most as radical as you as can radical, get, yeah. and this is what happens in most of such movements. You'll yeah. always have uh, a military radical wing and the intelligentsia, mm. and while both differ with each other, but when you hear them speak. It's, it's the same cause that they talk about. Mm. Always. So, while there might be several differences internally, uh, you'll never come across a Palestinian authority or PLO person sort of completely going after Hamas. Mm. Yes. True. It will be a sort of a balancing yeah. act. Right. Uh, right. So, because, you know, we can't uh, really uh, make up our minds on where we stand on... Uh, the the morality issue of uh, Israel's response, which we are seeing, uh, what's what's going on right now. Let's uh, go to what we can do the best, which is kind of you know clinically just take a look at what's going on. First question that should come to anyone's mind: It would be the world's most foolish thing to launch an operation like this, knowing that even if you manage to surprise Israel, which Hamas was able to. 
the response was going to be this it is like you know ab likh ke le lo kisi ko bhi pooch lo even a person who does not understand this conflict would know that there will also be justification yeah it there is justification already from the israeli side that please don't you this you have brought this upon yourself hold us accountable for human rights and things like that because now it's a full fledged war yes that's that was their first reaction that we are at war so see this is what this is the difference between states and militant organizations whether mm. you like it or not mm. what they've done they've be- behaved like a militant organization yes i mean they are one but yeah, yeah i mean and they have clearly proven proved that. it yeah uh, states ideally do not do not uh, act like this and if they do they they sh- they jolly well know what their plan b is and how they're yeah. going to deal with it uh, as they go forward i s- frankly don't think they they have thought so much over it yeah I think they just said that, as I was saying that the twenty twenty one operation by the Israeli forces in Al Aqsa Mosque mm. uh, has been a trigger. This is something that Hamas has been quoted. Sources mm. close to Hamas have been quoted in the international press. So it was that thing that you you know we need to take revenge mm. of what happened there, mm. and it took a lot of planning and two years down the line, it's there. their leaders proving to their supporters their followers mm. see we have done this i get what you're saying so you're basically saying which yeah i think that makes sense is that terrorism is not about some strategic objectives that it's you want to achieve emotional it's, it's, it's about it's, a, it's a more terrorism yeah, it's, basically it's, it's more about creating yeah, terror yeah, yeah. creating that emotion also, of terror and also proving a point to your own people yes that we are not scared we can take on the mightiest of powers mm. uh we'll get into their homes and we'll show them this is not the language of not the narrative of a professional State. trained i mean i always look at it from indian indian point of view mm. having interacted with military officials uh yeah i mean you will find this kind of language once in a while to pump up your soldiers mm. but that's not It's the legend. ideology that's not the ideology that you believe yeah. I think to give an example, post uh, the Balakot air strike, mm. when Pakistani uh, air force, uh, 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 you know, uh, set their eyes on targets in India, they said that we only locked our weapon system onto military installations. Mm-hmm. I'm guessing that's what you're trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Terrorist uh, uh, organization would, you know, bomb Precisely. a village, Precisely. for example. Yeah. And the same weapons. was the Indian narrative that it was a specific strike yes. on a terror Terrorist, hideout. Yes. And we ensured that there is yeah. no collateral damage. Yeah. So we had three options. We chose the one, yeah, yeah. one so with the least amount the countries, of civilians. Both the countries, both the countries, as much as uh, you would call, uh, you would want to call Pakistan a terror state or whatever, rogue state, whatever. rogue state, terror state, whatever. But they chose to go by this narrative. Mm. Of course, I mean they had no other option. I'm not saying that this by doing this that they had taken some really high moral ground. They obviously had no other option uh, because. And God forbid something like that had happened. We all know what would be the response and how mm. things would have turned. That's not the language a Hamas would believe in. Is mm. what I'm trying to say. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Uh, but point number two, then, uh, if uh, Hamas was you know uh, strategically brilliant uh, at planning such an operation. I think the most obvious thing to realize also would be that post the operation, Israel would target Gaza. Mm. So I would assume that Hamas and its top leadership and its you know the most important equipment would not be in Gaza right now. Do you see? We see we that? haven't heard of what kind of uh, equipment has been damaged and things like that yet. And of course, uh, Hamas has a, a great uh, network of Tunnels. underground facilities, which again is a very military thing. Hmm. those tunnels uh, i mean i'm seeing a lot of intrigue around hmm. tunnel banaye hue hain it is a what what is a bunker hmm. it's a tunnel yes you can move around under under the under, earth yeah <laughs> so that's a tunnel uh, and yeah that, that's something that uh, that's been part of military tactics yeah world war one was all about that yeah Bench mili- military tactics yeah. for years uh, where where do you put your Uh, crucial equipment your your tanks etc hmm. you have shelters for them the underground facilities something that's not visible with the naked eye even if you spot a shelter you understand militarily what what a shelter is even if you bomb that shelter 
you have enough uh, leverage yes. space to defend your uh, military platforms and yourselves mm. so yeah i mean they they have all of this i'm sure uh, a lot of these facilities will be uh, struck mm. by the israeli forces and uh, there will be damages i mean one mm. one can't say that uh, hamas will come out completely uh, unscratched mm. there will be and i am sure there will be uh, there is collateral damage i'm sure civilians are losing yeah. lives i mean it's it's impossible to say that civilians are not losing lives yeah. uh which brings me to point number 3 uh, i don't know if you've seen the video it was released this morning by the israel defense forces if i'm not wrong a drone footage of uh, one of the areas in gaza that had been bombed by israel and it was just rubble you know mm-hmm. buildings completely collapsed uh, hollow com- hollowed out from inside uh the images reminded me of stalingrad uh mm-hmm. the area the the area of uh, war in world war 2 uh, where germany faced a huge uh, mm-hmm. uh, loss uh, and which i think kind of changed the momentum of the war where i'm getting at is israel has said it's going to send in its tro- troops gaza is one of the world's most uh, densest populated Dense, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Uh, areas and you also have rubble like this mm. how do you just like you know again just looking at clinically strategically having covered conflict having covered wars how do you see a war happening in such an area is it I mean, frankly i don't think uh, the israeli forces uh, will be bothered about or they don't want not ensuring uh, collateral damage That's frankly true. because uh, the moral justification of that is that just about everybody living there mm. uh are hamas supporters every house has um, boys who join hamas and things like that i think that's the moral justification and after what's happened because israeli civilians have been targeted uh, i i don't think uh, the israeli forces mm. will be i'm talking more about uh, fighting a war in that region i mean ensuring your I'm objectives i'm not sure they are going to be moving in there uh, physically on land mm. it's going to be mostly air raids air raids and mm. things like that i don't see if they want to occupy it of course after the air raids have flattened the place that's when the ground troops will move in because I mean, that's basic military mm. warfare isn't it that if you want to occupy a land you need to do it physically boots on ground mm. so it depends what the objective is if they want to completely take over gaza yeah then boots on ground will move in Uh, to take complete occupation but till they have neutralized all threats mm, they won't move yeah, in yeah. but i think the takeover is a, i think that's what they're going to go for i think that's what they want yeah i mean uh, if they completely neutralize hamas now we are getting hypothetical uh then yeah either either they completely take over or uh or they get the guys to surrender yeah. i don't know i mean how it will work out yeah, okay. yeah. yeah it's it's still the initial days is 5 yeah, days yeah. the fifth day of the war right as we as we record this uh and i think people after the russia ukraine war mm-hmm. uh should have realized that let's not hazard any uh guesses yeah, of what might when happen. it comes to uh, the result of such mm-hmm. conflicts right uh but yeah i agree with you on the point that it's going to be is it's going to go full throttle especially because of the kind of global reaction it's received uh, yeah. the west's complete complete support no west is always uh, supported of course uh, yeah yeah uh, uh interesting statements coming from the middle east as well a lot uh, of a, a, a very interesting thing that i have heard uh of from people who support the palestinian cause is that how can the west have uh different uh, completely divergent views on this issue and ukraine that's that's their narrative question, yeah. actually that's their narrative that how how can they be supporting ukraine and not the palestine cause mm. but then i think you know it's uh, about what we discussed i think uh, during the canada episode that you know international diplomacy is not about morals and yeah, morality it's, yeah. it's about interests and see as again as i as said that. every country's interests their own interests is highest agenda for them yes. to decide how they are going to take a stand in a particular on conflict on different subjects yeah. you can't draw equivalences hmm. it's not a moral moral class exactly. moral science class happening unfortunately that's that's the mm. only truth
So yeah, I mean, and like I said, also interesting statements coming from uh, the Middle East, uh, and also and India the, had a different stand on uh, Israel. Yes, until 1992, 92. we changed our stand. Yeah. You change your stand because of your, your interests have your changed. Interests. Yeah, That's your right. interests have changed. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I was saying, the Middle Eastern st- uh, countries also have made some interesting comments because I think the sheer. Uh, the, the level of violence displayed uh, during the attack by Hamas has made it very difficult for people to ignore that. And yeah, I mean, if you just go course. by this, uh, just go by this, by yeah, this. yeah, not and, by the that's, historical. You know, that's this is uh, this is where I differ a bit, bit uh, with the larger narrative that always does the round. It's always the most recent development hmm. based on which uh, a lot of commentaries are written. True. So I mean that's that's my humble submission. Uh, I get it, but uh, that's what terrorism does, right? That's what the emotion of terror yeah. forces uh, your y- y- humans to do. You just go by the sheer. No, I I uh, I, I, I get a sense that uh, the world is so polarized on on several subjects that people find it a little awkward to say that you know, we, we don't have a stand on this, just like you and I have done it. Yeah, I think it's very rare. True, true. And it's very difficult to sort of say that, you know, I think <coughs> both are wrong. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. what, what are they trying in this? My That's my personal opinion. Uh, such an important region for the world mm. is fighting over religion. Yeah. That's the truth for me. Mm. Is fighting over Religion, that's religion. it. Yeah. There's nothing else but that. <laughs> well, so, I think it's also a, a lot to do with uh, the proliferation And you will only of, understand this if you get into the history. Huh. If you don't get into the history, you will not understand this. Yeah. But I think it's also a lot to do with the proliferation of the so, of social media. You know, you are under pressure to just I'm like not saying say other, something. Other say wars something. Have, yeah, exactly. exactly. I'm, I'm saying. not saying other wars have not happened. Of course, we've seen a lot of conflict in the mm. last few years somebody would have never imagined that in this era such kind of armed conflict would be mm. taking taking place but uh, nations fighting in the name of religion in 2023 and record. onwards yes. uh, i think is a very archaic mm. very regressive mindset for yeah. for mankind yeah, uh, you know, you since you mentioned commentary, just uh, this is actually something I wanted to uh, highlight on this uh, episode when we discuss uh, that uh, I was a bit taken aback uh, and sad, honestly, at some of the glee I saw on uh, social media about what was going to happen to Gaza because of the attack. You know, you saw a lot of it on. I don't know if you came. Uh, and you unfortunately, were on a, uh, a lot of Indians. A lot of Indians. I yeah, I, I meant. Oh, oh, what, I meant Indian social media. Yeah, by the way, yeah. uh, that's what I meant. So somebody told me a colleague uh, showed me an interesting uh, social media trend mm. that uh, all the criticism of uh, Israel and uh, the leadership is written in Hebrew, hmm. their language. Hmm. So their people are attacking their government. Yes. And all the praise is written in Hindi. Wow. I think it's a great story to do. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> we are not even a stakeholder. Exactly. That is what I was thinking over the weekend. <laughs> Why do we care? Somebody, like, yeah, okay, you can have a, uh, you know, this whole thing of, oh my God, it's a dastardly attack and, you know, Israel should hit back and hit uh, back hard. Somebody but, told me, uh, again, you know, see, the entire Muslim Brotherhood has come together. So I said, yeah, of course they will come together. They are stakeholders. It's yes. their fight. Who else do you expect will come yeah. together? That's been the historical fight. That's exactly what I'm saying. That Coming to conclusions and trying to uh, understand today's developments without any sense of history. And I'm, no, I, I'm nobody to take a history class, but yeah. and that's a, this is the only uh, you know glaring example that I see of... Uh, a lot of prejudices yeah. that are brewing. Yeah, and uh, it was honestly very disappointing to see. I mean, that's what I uh, that's why I brought it up because you mentioned you were uh, uh, not in in town uh, over the weekend. So I don't know if you got a chance to see it. But oh, it but was, you tend to check. It was uh, quite disappointing. Yeah, yeah, it was quite disappointing uh, to see that over the weekend. Uh, right. Uh, last point uh, as we uh, end this, uh, and this is something I wanted to discuss with you because you, uh, even though you don't cover uh, the Ministry of External Affairs, but because of the very nature of your work. It's closely linked. Uh, 
is it just me or uh, do you also find it very interesting that the MEA has not released a formal statement on this apart from an advisory for mm. Indians in Israel? And that the only statements that have come on this have been from the Prime Minister, mm. uh, from his uh, Narendra Modi uh, uh, account, uh, where one, he said that, you know, he condemned the terror attack and that India stands in solidarity with mm. Israel. Mm. And second, where he said that Netanyahu called him to give yeah. him an update on the situation yeah. and that so on and so forth. That's no, I think Emi has it. not said because if it's a personal conversation that the two Prime Ministers have had, mm. uh, of course, no official. Of course, of course, that's okay. So. But uh, my point being, do you also find it interesting that the EMEA has not yet come out with a statement on the entire issue? Because I don't think so. I, 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 don't. I, expected I don't know it, for I some reason it to be this way. Why? Because I, I mean, see, find it uh, odd. no matter what the prime minister says, there, there is uh, the Indian stand on these things has, has been that let's not be over the top. Hmm. So even when you didn't have uh, diplomatic ties with Israel, uh, of course there were utterances where at least the earlier on leaderships had uh, shown a lot of empathy with the Palestinian mm. cause. And uh, there are a lot of assessments done on it. Mm. Why was that so? Uh, no clear reason. One was, I think, that India didn't want to be seen as siding with the British. Okay. Hmm. That was early on. See, both countries got freedom in 1947. Hmm. And uh, the, the the conflict in the Arab world as far as Jews and Muslims are concerned, of course, predates it. And there was a sense in the Arab world that this is a problem that the British are creating. Hmm. See, a similar thing happened here. After all, that partition in yeah. India was, in was, was a complicated thing. Yeah. Here, that's what I'm saying. Here, that kind of partition wasn't possible because of the way the community has fractured, fractured. Yes. Uh, you like know, described. occupation yeah. of, uh, of of how the hmm. communities were living. That's what made it really, really difficult and complicated. So that was one reason that it shouldn't be seen that you know we are. We are, we are siding with the mm. British in such a sensitive kind of a policy. Later on, I don't know if this is uh, a little uh, sort of right-wing uh, politics of India that has propagated this. I'm not too sure, uh, but it's a de decent argument to make that Congress at that point of time also did not see, because this was an issue uh, where Muslims all over the world probably were on the same page. Mm. And they that that seen this as some kind of uh, uh, an attack on Muslim beliefs. Mm -hmm. So uh, the leadership, the Congress leadership at that point of time, the scars of partition were very fresh. Did not want to sort of alienate mm. the Indian Muslim population. Because remember, when partition happened, there were a lot of pockets again in India. India could have been a Israel kind of a situation had our leadership not taken a some very strong stance. Mm. It could have exactly been that. And, you know, things like Hyderabad yes. uh, going going to Pakistan or remaining a Muslim independent state, Kashmir remaining either a Muslim independent state, Bangladesh already went. So this whole idea of wherever Muslims are in majority, mm. they should be out of India. So what was India's stand? India is not going to be a Hindu country. It's going to be a country where whoever has been living here is a natural person for this yes. land. This was our stand. This is what has saved us from not being an Israel and a Palestine. I think uh, that's a very good uh, point on which to end this episode. Uh, we'll watch this uh, conflict closely like we do uh, with all uh, conflicts uh, and they seem to be happening a lot these days, by yeah. the way. Much uh, more than we would have thought. Yeah. We would have thought actually, I yeah. thought when I was growing up uh, and and the Gulf Wars happened uh, when I was really young, oh, yeah. uh, the war in Kuwait happened. Uh, I, I, th I thought after that there will be no Yeah, like the world will be a mature place yeah. and you know we won't be fighting and yeah. killing each other, but apparently not. I think it's got gotten worse, probably. Probably, could you could yeah. make that argument? Yeah, as, as uh, you know, in terms of sheer uh, the violence you see because yeah. of the modern day tech and weaponry. The, the war, the war on terror in Afghanistan and Iraq, yes. 
आई डोंट नो हाउ टू सर ऑफ क्लासीफाई दैट वॉर दैट कॉन्फ्लिक्ट आई डोंट नो हू वन वेल दैट्स इट देन थैंक्स टू आर लिस्ट एंड व्यूवर्स एंड थैंक्स अभिषेक एज एज ऑलवेज वंस अगेन टू आर लिस्ट एंड व्यूवर्स डू लेट एस नो वॉट यू थिंक ऑफ दिस एपिसोड और अ पॉडस इन जनरल लीव अ कॉमेंट फॉर एस ऑन द इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन बिलो इफ यू वॉचिंग दस ऑन यूट्यूब एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू वाट्सएप अस वन डू जॉइन अर वाट्सएप चैनल एंड सेकेंड यू कैन ड्रॉप अ मैसेज टू अस एट एट फाइव डबल एट नाइन डबल सिक्स डबल नाइन सिक्स अ स्पेशल थैंक्स एस ऑलवेज टू आर प्रोड्यूसर एंड अर प्रियर दर्शनी That's it for this week's defense dose for more tune in next week till then stay safe and do not cross any boundaries without a passport bye bye